Good morning, everybody. I hope we got the start there. I <laughs> forgot to press a couple of buttons. So anyway, we've got started and uh, we're on the way. So today, last day of the hutch. This is our lovely hutch. All of the things that I have to do after today are fairly large and I have to shift the hutch to, to do anything. So um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to do finish off the drawers today. Um, we'll get some finish on things, have a look at that, a bit of sanding, put some edges on the drawers and just do general stuff around the, around the hutch to finish it off and um, that will do us for today. And the next time you see the hutch, which will be uh, next week, uh, hopefully I'll have the whole thing all sanded, all finished and are back on it and fitted up with all of the bits and bits that we're going to put in it or some of the bits anyway. So we're going to have a bit of a go at that. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is what I've done so far up to this stage is I've finished one of the draw fronts to the sanded um, surface so it's all been sanded and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run an edge around it and we'll do that when we do the other one but the first thing I want to do is I want to show you how I fitted it to start with so this is the first one this one goes over here you can see um, that one fits in there quite nicely well it, well it did the other day anyway so so that one fits in there and and, and as you can see it, um, it looks quite nice in there. I'll just turn this other camera over so that you can see um, what I'm doing. You can see that it, it, fits, it fits really nicely into, into the cavity. Um, I've also drilled the holes for the, for the handle. So that's all been done as well. So it's just a matter of now fitting the other one. So my second one is going to fit into there. Now it's not; it's too long at the moment. Um, I've um, I've got to trim it down. I'll be doing that in a second. But a couple of things before I started doing that is um, there's there's lots of different ways of actually fitting drawer fronts, and most cabinets have particular characteristics that allow you to do a particular type of fitting. This one here is quite difficult because you don't have any access to anything. You can't um, slide it out and, and, and hook the whole thing up, uh, um, just put a clamp on it and then just screw the whole thing together. It doesn't actually work that way because we've got a cavity. We have to have something that first of all fits inside the cavity and then we have to make sure that when we cut it down to size that we've got a space around the cavity so that um, the drawer will close and open. But you don't want too big a cavity, uh, too big a gap around the cavity. What I've got is a couple of shims out of our, our dovetail jig. Okay, so it's only one thickness of that is going to be the space around the drawer, which is adequate for this size drawer. So I'm going to sift that around there. So what I've done so far is I've rested that on top of there and fitted the drawer. Oops upside down this way so that fits in there quite nicely all I've got to do now is just dock it to the length so that's what I'm going to be doing today to start with now before I started that the other problem we had was if I had the back on it I wouldn't have been able to get the drawer out so when I pulled the drawer out if I um, ha had a back on it, the drawer would stop when I closed it in there, but it, it, it doesn't do that because I still haven't got the back on it. So it goes all the way through. So it's really hard to actually adjust and set that up so that it's actually going to fit and I can get it out. Right. So what I've done is I've stuck a piece of um, offcut in the back there just to sort of stop it. It's right in the back. And then when I put the drawer in, like so, I've got an upper room, room around there so that when I sit that into there, I can actually get hold of it to pull it out. 
Okay, so that's, that's what I've done there. Now, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark it up and dock the ends of it and get it to fit in there. So I'm just going to line that up and put a couple of marks on here. I'll just go over to this other camera. So all I'm doing here is lining up with the edge making sure I've got an even layout and I'm going to dock that little bit off there and that little bit off there. I could measure it. I could get myself a, a long ruler, measure that and then put the measurement on there. But I find this is just as easy. Um, I can take a little bit off each side. So I'm going to do that. So I'll just spin my camera around. Don't get giddy, folks. Don't get giddy. Little drop saw. And this is my mark. Just getting what I'm doing there. So just using my finger gauge to put a mark on here. Now this is only rough because it's not going to fit perfect the first time. Do the same on the other end. So just with my finger gauge. And by having the gauge set properly set to the same size, I'll take the exact same amount off each end. Okay, so ears on. on there again. Now this is not going to fit straight away but we'll we'll give it a go. Okay so I need to take a little bit more off each end. Okay so I'll go back to my camera. I'll go back to my drop saw. Take a tiny bit off, ears on. And you'll notice that I take a little bit off each end. Rather than trimming one side down all the time. Okay, so we have now a pretty close fit. I probably need to take a tiny bit more off. It's, it's very snug, so it's going to be too tight um, a fit when you're opening and closing the drawer. So I'll just take a little bit more off one end. Ears on. I sit it on top of, I'll just bring my camera around because that will probably be all I need. Just making sure that okay, so that fits pretty much spot on. And it's sitting on top of the shim, so what it's doing, it's it's actually giving you a little space on the bottom. And I've got a little space at the top as well. So not very much at all. So now what I'm going to do is we have to fit it to the drawer. So one little thing I do before I start, and I need Tammy's help here. On the bench there, Tammy, is some black compact laminate. Could I have three or four of those, please? Two forty. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I want to put some weight in the drawer to sit down onto 
the um, onto the slides. So I've got a little bit of weight, and I'm just going to put it in the drawer. That way, things are not going to ride up when I when I do the next task. Okay, so I line my drawer up, put it in exactly the right spot that I need it. Now, how am I going to fit that? I could drill straight through here, but I don't want to put the holes in the front of the drawer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some double-sided tape and just tape the drawer front in position. So if I put my shim down, like so, let's go back to the side camera for, for you. And double-sided tape, you can buy it in a, in a roll like that. Um, it's fairly easy stuff to get hold of. They, they often call it mounting tape. So it's double-sided tape and fairly thick bit, and it's very, very strong. So it's strong enough for what we're, we're going to do. We're just going to tape the drawer front to the drawer, and then we'll pull it out cramp it in place, so I have to get some cramps, and then we'll drill the holes and screw the thing together. So, double-sided tape. Let me see that. So I'll just put a piece there. I've got these two bits already cut. The big problem with this stuff is peeling the bit off the back. So I preempted and I set it up before I started the show today. So that's one piece. You need very thin fingernails or a nice sharp knife or something to get that. So now I've got my two pieces of tape in place. Make sure I get this in the right place at the first go. So I sit it on top of my shim. Push that in there like so. Just making sure it's spot on. And push that in. Okay, so now I should be able to pull the drawer out with the piece of tape, and there we have it. Now before I go too far, what I want to do is clamp that in place. So if I just put a clamp there. Clamp there and hold it. Take out my weights. And here we go. If I turn this around again. Now, remember last, or oh, right back in the beginning, we talked about. setting the drawer up before you actually just checking that's that's all up to date we talked about setting the drawer up before um, before we actually built it we we drilled some holes in it and these are the holes here that one there and that one there and of course we've got the other two over there so what I want to do now before we take the tape off we're going to take that tape off later first thing we're going to do is we're going to drill a couple of holes and put some screws in So just want to start the hole on that side and I'll put a screw in it just to make sure that it's going to stay there. Um, now the screws that I'm using to start this up are just a couple of countersunk stainless steel, steel screws. Um, if I tried brass screws, 
particularly in this hard stuff, I'd probably end up breaking the, the head off the screw. So if I use a, stain, a steel one, um, I'm not likely to break it, which is a good start to getting it in place. Okay, so. there. I'm just going to shift this cramp so that I can actually get at this one. Probably should have two drill bits, but drills. But the other drills that I've got are actually too big to fit between the into here. This little one does does the trick nicely. Okay, so we have the drawer front fitted. Let's see if it fits into the cavity. Take the shim away. Straight in, perfect. Fits beautifully. Okay, so what I can do now is because I've got those two screws already put in place, what I'm going to do now is go back to the bench. Take those two screws out. side of tape hopefully will come off a bit of work to get that off now that's going to be a bit of fun decided to stay put So that's one side. That's the other side. Let's peel this stuff off. So, and now I can screw that back into place. I'm still going to use the steel screws at this stage because that's what I used originally to, to fit it. But we'll just go straight back into the hole. So, that's one, that's two, I'm just going to refit before I do the other holes, yep, beautiful. Now it's just a matter of doing the other two holes. On the drill bit. Now, I'm not too concerned at this stage about trying to put the correct screws in because I'm going to pull the top off anyway. Let's 
So See how much easier it is not having to countersink the holes. Um, because I did it earlier, the holes are already there. It's not a drama when you doing this. So, and that's my drawer front fitted. Now what I need to do is fit, get this up a little higher, is fit my draw handle. Now the draw handles that I've chosen are exactly the same if you're looking at the top corner, they're exactly the same as the draw handles that I have on the rest of the cabinets. And so that's what they're going to look like when they fit it. So I'm going to just measure up and, and do that. Now I want them fairly close to the middle. I'd rather have them on the top side just to make that little balance. So if I you bring them up a little bit higher and not quite have them in the centre, you know, like um, it, it just looks a little bit better. Well, that's my opinion anyway. So. We're just going to make that fit just a little bit nicer. So, how to fit these. One of the methods that I've seen um, people use, which is quite a good method, is draw yourself a centre line along the length of the cabinet and then cut yourself a piece of tape. That's the width or the length of Scissors. Like so. Now how do we line up these holes? Okay, so there's two little holes there. You put the tape on, like so. Okay, so that's going to sit like that. I think it's a pencil. I had one here. Got another one. Turn it over, and where the two holes are, plug a little hole. Right, do that there. And do that there. Okay. So now what we need to do is if you line the, the handle up, it's supposed to be like that. What we can do is just tape that piece of tape down, take the thing off, you've got your holes all lined up. Okay, so that that's another technique that you can use. <coughs> and then it's just a matter of taking the handle off, and these are two holes. Right? And it's just a matter of drilling the hole. Now, that's one technique of doing it. It, it's sometimes successful, not always, but it, it does it does work. So I'm not going to use that technique. This is the technique that I've used. I've drawn my line. I don't know if you can see that very, very light. I don't want to press too hard on the cedar because it tends to sort of mark it. So I've drawn myself a centre line. I've got myself a centre line here, and then I've very carefully measured out where the two holes are going to be. For, for the screws. And then we grab this tool. I've measured that out already, so then we grab this tool and we just punch a couple little holes in there. This gives you really good accuracy. Okay, so that's those two holes. And that's where my screws are going to go. I get a bigger drill and a bigger drill bit and we're going to drill a hole in there, right? Now, when you look at the screws that I'm using, this is what they look like, right? Now, when you buy the 
screws uh, by the, the, the handles, they'll come with the screws. Now the screws will have an extra length on. I've cut these ones off at the right length so that they come through my cabinet door. Okay, just enough through there so I can actually screw it into the handle. So I need to make sure that they're the correct length. Now, to give yourself a little bit of adjustment, instead of making the hole for the, for the, the screw exactly the same size as, as or the diameter of the screw, make it a little bit bigger. So I always go err on the size of a little bit bigger, but not that big that it's bigger than the head of the screw. You need to still have it smaller than the head of the screw. And I've done that with a five millimeter drill bit. And very carefully. nice. The same on the other side. There's my two holes. have a little bit of blowout in the back but that's not too bad because um, it's going to be covered over by the head of the screw so a little bit of sandpaper just give the hole a bit of the sand a little too much just a little bit just to take the burr off and then we can Get the handle. I have got a second one here, there it is. And by making the hole a little bit bigger than it should be, I've actually got a little bit of movement in it, okay, so I can move it back and forth and put it in the correct place. So now it's just a matter of get the right size screwdriver. I think this one should do the trick. Like so. Screwing that up. Tight. And now we fit it to the cabinet. So what I can do is just to take out Woohoo. Look at that. It's nice thick. Straight in. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to, it's just catching, might need to take a little bit off the bottom. So what I need to do now is um, I'll fit the other one, but I'll, I'm going to pull it apart and I'm going to run a little chamfer around here to match up to the other drawers. When you have that closed like that, it just, it, it's sort of a big block and I need to have something that defines the drawer itself. So. That's what we're going to do. I'll set that up. So give me a couple of secs. So I need that there. Just going to pull this apart. going to flick over to Dave today, 
he's going to be using our jig to um, to build a um, to build a camera display unit, which could be interesting. And I've seen some of the plans and. I don't know if I want to watch. It could be it could be interesting. I believe he's using the B10, so uh, it's going to be fairly chunky timber. But uh, yeah, so it, it, it could be an interesting little show if you watch over to Dave's. So I'll just shift all this stuff out of the way. I've got some bit, bits of rubbish here that I need to get rid of. Out. So as you can see, fitting a drawer, um, it can be it can be a real disaster if you if you don't um, you know if you don't if you don't set yourself up for it and 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 don't follow some simple rules. Number one, just sort of stay steady and, and just um, you know go easy with it. Don't rush it, and um, and just think through. The sorts of things that you need to do to get the drawer to fit properly. Got stuff everywhere. Okay, so running the champ around the outside edge. Now there are two ways of doing this that um, you can do it by hand. So I can clamp my piece of timber down. So, I'm going to put my clamps away. Clamp the piece of timber on there. Or you can put it in a vise if you've got something that will take it, something handy. And I can take some shavings off. I wouldn't do that without marking it. Okay, so what I would do is I'd set myself up a mark and just have some sort of uh, guide that, that we need and I could plane it like so. Okay, and that would give me quite a nice, quite a nice uh, chamfer around the edges of it and I'd go all the way around it. Um, that would take me 20, 20 minutes, I suppose, to do the whole of that drawer and, and the other one. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to race it around the, the jig. I have these tools available, so I might as well use them. So in our suite of router bits, we have this router bit here. Okay. Now, that's just a 45 degree um, router bit with a bearing on the top of it, made by Carby Tool, but it's made to our sizes. Generally, you find that those this router bit comes in um, 35 and 40 millimetre diameter. This one is set at 30 millimetres so that it fits in the hole of, the, of our router table. So... It's been changed a little bit and they had to go through a process to actually get it to work properly so and still have the right angle on it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to set the height. I'm just going to do it by eye because I only want to take a small amount off. I don't want to take too much off. Just a tiny little bit. Just to define the drawer and give a shadow line around the drawer itself. Okay, so our first cut is going to be along the long edge. So we're going to do both the long edges and front edge. And then um, I'll do both the edges and I'll do the second drawer as well. So we have them both exactly the same. So earmuffs. I had a pair. Here we go. That's on, that's on. Power's on over there. So ears on everybody.
I might come up a little bit higher. That didn't take very much, unfortunately. Took a bit off the B. Okay, ears on again. And so we end up with, I don't know how, how well you can see that. You can see that the really nice clean little chamfer around the front edges. So that's for that door. And the reason, the reason I'm doing along the grain first is because I've got end grain coming off here. So the end grain comes off there. When I plane off the edges or when I cut onto the edges there, if I get any tear out that happens on the, on the corner, I can pick that up when I cut along the edge there, okay? So, here we go, here we go. Okay, so now we've got that done. Our next task is to look at putting finishes on things because I could fit that straight away. Um, not, a, not a problem. I could fit that straight on there, and, but I'll, I think what I'll do is I'll put a coat of finish on it before we actually um, assemble it. Um, I'm not going to glue the drawers to the face just in case at some stage down the track I want to change it for, for some reason or other. There might be a reason behind changing it. I just want to be able to get it off. So that's what I'm going to do is put a finish on it. I'm going to go through uh, uh, one of the sanding processes that I use to, um, to get it ready. This one's already been sanded. This one's ready to go. The drawers have been sanded and also I've sanded the shelves. So I'm going to put a bit of finish on each of those. I've got a few minutes to do it. With the drawer, this one here, I need to sand this to get it ready because I've got pencil marks on it. I've got um, little scratches and things like that. I just need to tidy it up before I actually put a finish on it. And this is where my trusty Merker comes in handy. Now, I've shown you this before, uh, so I'm going to go over it again, just, just very quickly. I've made myself a sanding platform. Okay, so now I can sit that on there. It's got a, um, a non-slip surface on it. So just going to get my merker out. I'll just put that there. have it all set up so it's all good to go. Now this this is the Eros. Right? So the the, the Deros I should say. Dios. Three five three. So it's just a, a corker of a little sander and it's good for everything. When I do the, the cabinet, I'm going to use it on the cabinet as well. So just using this one here, my sanding papers, these ones here. So I've got 180, 240, 320, 400 and 600. So I'm only going to go those, those levels there. But this comes in a couple of models. So you've got a longer one as well. So if you're doing, using bigger pieces of furniture, um, it... Um, you could probably use a bigger one. But for, for what, what, what I'm doing with boxes and uh, small pieces of furniture, particularly like the one we've got there, this is, this is, this is adequate. It'll, it'll do the job really nicely. If you're into 
trying to use uh, smaller things and doing very, very small bits. They come out with, you can buy a tool like this one, okay? Now, Cirrus 5, let me just get a bit of closer up for you. This one here is, uh, it's got a 125 mil disc that goes on it. Um, it's the 550, so it's, it's quite a nice little one. The problem with this, this older model is that it has to run through a, um, a transformer to get all the power up, but that's still okay. I can still work with it quite adequately. You can attach a dust extractor to it, so it's quite good. And then there's the smaller model as well, which is this one here, which is an 88 millimeter um, disc. You can see they're quite small. And if I'm doing very, very small boxes, then that one's really, really handy. Okay, so that's the 325. So again, this one runs through a transformer. It's one of the older models. I think the newer ones are a bit like a bit like this, where they run straight through the dust extractor, and we have no problems with it. So get onto uh, Japanese Tools. There's a link at the bottom of our uh, page um, to Japanese Tools. They have them. They sell them. They're really good. So Christian will look after you if you if you decide to go along and have a chat to him. So this is how we're going to work with this. So my first task. 180 grit. Okay, so ears on, folks. Quite a simple, easy task. Flip him over. Along my edges. Another side. Do my other end. You can hear the dust extractor in the background. It's hooked up to the extractor, so as you can see, no dust. One of Dave Stanton's uh, um, favourite things is to have no dust showing. Now I always, and I do this on every single project that I do, is I always work coarse sandpaper right down to fan sand, fine sandpaper. I do not jump from coarse sandpaper to fine sandpaper and miss everything in between. If you do that, you're going to find that using the, sand, the fine sandpaper is not going to help you one little bit. It, it, doesn't, it, it won't take off the, the scratches. The idea is, Clean your work up with the 180 by taking off all the pencil mark scratches and anything else that might happen to tooling marks that might happen to appear. Get rid of them with the 180. The 240 gets rid of the sand scratches that the 180 create. 320 does the same for the 240 and so forth right down through the through the grades. So you need to follow down through the grades.
Let's give this one another going over with the 600, which is what I did in the beginning. So as you can see, that didn't take very long to do that. Part of the reason is that before I start doing any of my woodwork, I tend to sort of finish up my piece of timber to, a, to you know, sometimes 600, sometimes 800, um, and get it, get it really nice before I actually start cutting joints in. It. And most of the time when I'm cutting joints, I'm using the dovetail jig, and they give me a perfect joint every time. So it's not as if I have to sort of struggle with, with lots of different types of tooling marks, occasionally a few pencil marks and so forth, but it makes it a little easier down the track to get, get your sanding done. So I'll get that out of the way. So Merka bonds a little tool. Okay, we get rid of that. And making yourself uh, jigs and platforms they tend to sort of clog up the workshop occasionally, but at least they get um, make make life easy for you. So now what we're going to do is put a coat of finish on something here just to show you what it looks like once it's all together. Again, I want to clamp on that. Just make sure that these things don't slide around while we're working on them. Okay, so my finishing platform. Now, the finish that I'm going to use on this is, uh, is, is this one here, which is um, a Livos uh, countertop oil. Um, I want something that's relatively hardy. If I was doing a box, I would use uh, just a normal um, oil without any additives. This one here's got a little bit of, a little bit of something in it that actually allows it to um, go a little harder than normal, so countertop, and that's what all this has been done in. So as you can see, it's quite a quite a nice finish. And you've been watching it over the last few months when we're doing the shows. It hasn't changed one little bit. So the problem with buying your oils in um, in big containers like this, it tends to sort of create a skin on the top. This one here has been hanging around for a little while. And I'll get my multi-tool here. These are just a couple of old rulers that I, that I have lying around the place that, that, that actually don't do a great deal. Just going to break off the top of that skin, just peel it off to the side. Give it a bit of a stir. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just show you what these look like. I'll put myself a pair of rubber gloves on here first. And with the oils, when you're using oils, you don't have to be a sort of bit of a, uh, a, a little bit um, apprehensive about putting it on. You should, um, you should just slop it on so you've got plenty of, plenty of oil on there. The timber will soak it up. So you want the timber to soak it up, fill up the pores and, um, and create a nice bit of depth to the timber. Okay, so just a little brush, and look at that. I'll just turn that over to the other camera. Look what that does. It's actually created a golden surface on the on the um, the heavier, which is the, the the light timber, and you can see how it's lifted the the qual the colour on the on the cedar. Slop a bit of that on. Bring my edges. If you're um, going to glue the 
you, you crunch down, it's sometimes a good idea to actually do the whole drawer with um, the front in situ so that um, it's just one, one big task. But I'm not going to do that, so... Okay. And I have a couple of bits of wood here. These are just off-cuts. just want to sit that up on, on there. just want to let it sit and soak in for a little bit. You can see, you can see already just here, you can see where it's actually just soaked in already. And it's gone a little bit dry, so I'm just going to add some more. I want that to, to really soak it up. And I'll do the second one. This one seems to be a little bit lighter than the first one. Not to worry, as it ages, it then gets a bit of, a bit of weather on it. Well, not that it's going to be outside, but when it gets a bit of weather on it, it'll, um, it'll darken up as well. And then they'll look pretty much the same. So how good is that looking? Get it all over, turn that one over, and this again also, also it's dried out a little bit, so I might put another bit more on there. Now, normally I would leave that sit for probably 20 minutes. We don't have 20 minutes, so what I'll do now is I'll just show you what it looks like when it's wiped off. We've only got five minutes or so left. Yeah, don't forget to flick over to Dave and see how he goes with his uh, with his Gifkins jig. Oh, by the way, next week I've got a real special treat for you. Next week we're going to. I've, I've had lots of questions about what do I use each of the router bits that we have um, in our Ultimate Cutter Kit and our Master Cutter Kit. So next week I'm going to start. Next week I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to go through a demonstration process of each of the router bits that we use in, in um, our box making processes out of the ultimate cutter kit that we, per we sell. So stay tuned for that one because it's, uh, I'm just going to go through and, and just give a demonstration on each of the tools and how we use them and why we use them for each of those processes. Now, these, uh, quite a few of these router bits were developed by Roger Gifkin um, in, in the early days, and um, they still, they still um, in, in, in use nowadays are in pretty good state. Okay, look at that. How, how good is that? You reckon that'll look all right? Okay, get that out of there. And so our next task is to put the finish on the drawers. Now I've done the, I've, I've sanded the drawers. I just put these over here out of the way. I've sanded the drawers, so the same process applies to the drawers. So it's just a matter of putting a, a finish over the whole of the drawers. Now um, I've only got uh, five minutes, so. I want to show you something else that we did. I just have to uh, just go. I don't know, leave that camera there. What I've done is I've, uh, I've I've sanded and fitted all of my shelves. So this is what my shelves look like, all tidied up. And as you can see, we've got this really nice front edge on it. Okay, I'll just get, just shift that one out of the way. Beautiful. Thank you. 
Okay, so that, that they just fit on there like so. And the edges of them are actually um, the cedar will show up like the edges on the other cabinets that we have there. So I'm going to paint one of those just to show you what it looks like instead of doing the drill. They've all been sanded. And so... Just a matter of giving them a, a coat. And as you can see, it, that it smartens up the the lighter timber makes that look really nice. And if I just get one of them done for you, you can see you can see now you can see the difference between the two, looking really really nice. Give them over. that on I keep saying to Pammy every time we go out somewhere every, every time we do something around the house I'm threatened to get a painter in because I don't particularly like this task <laughs> and uh, but I end up doing it anyway I'm not a, I'm not I'm not a big fan of painting things that's why I tend to oil things. I don't, I don't put a, a finish on them because you just have to repaint them 10 years later. So, make sure I cover everything. Pretty good. A piece of paper towel. Just wipe the excess off. I'd normally, like I say, I'd normally let that sit for 10 minutes or so, 10, 20 minutes, and let it soak in. Oh, but I haven't got time for that at the moment. Just want to be able to put it up there, show you, show you exactly what, what it looks like when it's finished, when it's got the coat of finish on it. Like I say, next week, when you see it again next week, you'll, I'll have pretty much all of it done. I have to have put the back on it. The back will be made from the heavier as well. Um, but I have to split that down the middle, and that's a major task. Okay, so I'll just go to into that camera. And... Look how that nicely that stands out. Okay, so that's that's what they're all going to look like, and the heavier will will show it up as well. So basically, that was that's where we're going to go with all of this sort of stuff. So that'll be it for today. So next week, don't forget, stay tuned for next week because we're going to be doing the bits and pieces in the. This is what what it looks like. This is our our ultimate cutter kit. So all of those parts, I'm going to have bits and pieces of timber all over the place and show you how we use all of those. Um, just to sort of help those people who keep asking questions about what do I use this for, what do I use that for, how do I use it and so forth. So we'll go through all of that next week and um, have, a little, have a little play with all of that sort of stuff. So it'll be fairly easy. And then the following week, we're going to do the upgrade kit to turn it into a master kit and that will give us... Uh, uh, also uh, give you an overall view of all of the router bits that we have in our master cutter kit. So next week, ultimate cutter kit, following that the ultimate upgrade to make it a master and then we'll, you'll, you'll have a fairly good idea of how to do those sorts of things. So we'll go with that. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you uh, like what you've seen and you haven't uh, subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell. A um, couple of thumbs up wouldn't go astray. So stay safe, everyone, and um, flick over to Dave, and it should be exciting, I hope.
so anyway we'll give it a shot so stay safe everybody and we'll see you all next sunday